If you think about what the American people have done is they have handed a decisive victory and really a mandate to Donald Trump to go to the White House, bring inflation down, make housing more affordable, mm -hmm. secure the border, don't engage in more wars, and make me... Hello guys, get ready for an intense debate as Kevin O'Leary and Anthony Pompliano go head-to-head -head on key issues shaping today's economy. From the latest market reactions to Trump's influence to Bitcoin soaring above 75 and the future of stocks, they clash on regulation, pro-business policies, and energy trends. Who's got it right on crypto's growth and America's economic trajectory? Watch these two heavyweights dig into what it all means for investors and entrepreneurs alike. Subscribe now, hit that bell icon, and embark on an enriching journey toward financial success. Let's unlock the potential of these markets together and pave the way for a brighter financial future. Welcome aboard. The Dow and S&P hitting all-time highs, Bitcoin topping 75K, the dollar and treasury yields spiking Taylor, this is your stuff. Walk us through it. I know. So this kind of feels like 2016 2.0 again, right? Take a look quickly at these equity markets, particularly the Russell 2000 at the bottom of the screen. Huge sort of reinflationary pro-growth, low taxes, low regulation, uh, equity rally kind of day. Similar story when it comes to the bond market. Yields jumping across the board. That is priced lower, yield higher. Really on that sort of reinflationary trade that we have been talking about dollar massive strength as well, sort of keeping up with higher yields. Bitcoin is the story, you guys. It doesn't close. So last night, I think around scrolling through the Bitcoin feed and we topped 75,000. Remember, the key number was 73,700. That was the record we had in March, blowing through that. Again, more records for Bitcoin today. DJT is another story. Now, unfortunately, I do not come with any fundamental news, except that you now have maybe that president-elect, who's also a 57% shareholder of DJT. Mm. It is up 6%. And so as the, uh, you know, DJT goes, so too does the net worth of Donald Trump. That's where we're going next with Kevin O'Leary, O'Leary Ventures Chairman and Anthony Pompliano, Professional Capital Management Founder and CEO. Great to have both of you here on set today on, on such a big day. Kevin, I want to start with you. I have sort of walked through the classic Trump trade 2.0. As an investor, how do you think about days like today and a future president? Most of the moves you're seeing, including in Bitcoin, is around lifting of the regulatory weight mm -hmm. that's been put on in the previous administration. Mm -hmm. Um, about a trillion dollars be pulled out of this. And so this will be very good for every sector, including energy. We just detailed that. But crypto specifically, that it started to happen just before one o'clock in the morning. It trades 24 seven. It's an index for a regulated environment for financial services in the US, which will bring in a huge amount of institutional capital here. Pop and I have been involved in this sector for years and years. <laughs> and, and you know, he, uh, before he even gets into it, I was against Bitcoin. Uh, oh. years ago. And the first, you know, debate I ever had was with him on it. I've reversed my position, obviously, and for, for a good reason. But what this means, and uh, let me give you some of the rumor mill going on this morning. The CFTC is going to take a bigger role in regulating all tokenization mm. and digital payment systems. Uh, they're looking for a new master of disaster there, if you want to call it that, someone to take on the role of that. It won't be so much SEC focused. And so we're very excited about that in the crypto industry. But for me, it's digital payment systems. What a great place to invest. So I have put money to work in Circle, okay. USDC and other infrastructure investments. It's it's fantastic. It's interesting because I was watching Bitcoin last night. I was watching the betting markets as well. When Trump got to 90%, it was just Everybody's up in the middle of the 11, night checking No, this Bitcoin is just before 11 o'clock. Anthony, I said to myself, you know what? Sleep is more important than waiting for <laughs> him true. to win. Yeah. I'll find out in the morning. But ultimately, we're looking at an equity market right now that is going gangbusters on this notion, maybe regulation for, for crypto, Kevin, but not for a lot mm. of other industries. Yeah. Pull back on regulation, lower corporate taxes. Um, Donald Trump is seen as a pro-business president who's going to bring CEOs into the fold who are going to help him manage as well. And you've got a Dow, Taylor, to your dismay that I'm speaking <laughs> about the Dow that's up 1,400 points right now. Yeah. I, I think, first of all, you got to remember, you're putting a pro-business, pro-investor, pro-capitalism candidate in the White House. That's good for business. That's good for investors. So I think that they're getting long. But more importantly, is there's a vibe shift. And so not only are they getting long, they're also getting loud. And you can feel people 
people saying, hey, wait a second, I was a little uncertain going into the election what was going to happen. Now that it's such a decisive victory, uh, he's going to go into the White House. I need to be fully exposed to this market. We're going much higher. You're doing that at the same time they've got the Fed cutting interest rates and M2 money supply growing. And so I think that that'll be very good for risk assets in general. Another area that people are not talking about yet, which I think plays into some of the deregulation, is Trump has run on a deregulation in the energy sector. And so one of the areas that I'm really paying attention to is the intersection of these new technologies, AI, crypto, et cetera, with these kind of more modern energy infrastructure companies. So there's a company in Canada, HUD8, that I'm an advisor with. They're an energy infrastructure provider to the new industries. And so you get kind of deregulation on energy, but then you get these new energy consumers. And so anywhere where you can find the modern uh, industries intersecting with these kind of more traditional businesses, I think you're going to see a huge uh, kind of capital flow because people realize that they want some of the new riskier stuff, but they also still want the fundamentals of a business with hard assets, et cetera. All right. So let me let me talk and kind of marry this together because we just got the news on Michigan. OK, and it was breaking toward Trump. We've now confirmed it's in his category. That's a big deal that Trump wins Michigan. Heart of the auto industry, heart of the union fights this year. Kevin, what does that tell you? So the unions endorsed Harris. However, the membership voted for Trump is what happened. Mm-hmm. Because even though he doesn't want to mandate electric cars, uh, this is good for just the industry as it stands because now they'll allow people to make choice between combustion and, and electric. And it won't put so much pressure for these elect- for, for car companies like Ford, which is just, that stock has been dead in the water for years as a result of losing so much money in electric cars. Now they can say, wait, we'll build what people want because Trump wants competition in the market. We love that. Uh, this HUD-8 company I'm well aware of, and it's an interesting uh, thing he brought up because Pomp is right. The challenge we have now is we need power for the HUD-8s of the world. They provide the data centers we don't have any power for, and now with Trump, we'll get the power. It's not just drill, baby, drill on oil. It's gas, baby, gas, because we can get the turbines to turn it into electricity. I think we're getting too much agreement between these two. <laughs> I know. Right? No, he's a very bad guy. Right. He's a very bad other. guy. He's a very but, bad but can guy. I just, can I just say this? I think, actually... Pulling off regulation and subsidies from the green space is going to spur innovation in that space. We'll get more of it under Trump because he's a lighter touch guy. I do want to talk about that green space. Both of you gentlemen speak in ROI, Mm -hmm. return on investment. Elon Musk, you know, smart billionaire entrepreneur, invests, what, $150 million in, in Pennsylvania? up today, $15 billion in net worth because of Tesla. If that isn't a great ROI, I don't know what is. How do you think, though, about Tesla, Elon Musk, Mm. EV, a future at the White House? You know, all of those things as market participants, Tesla shareholders are sort of ruminating with today. The genius of Elon Musk is Elon Musk is not going out saying that he's a green entrepreneur. He's not going out saying he's doing social impact. He's simply saying, I'm going to build a better product or service, and I'm going to come deliver it to you at a cheaper cost, and therefore the market adopts it. And so that's why most electric vehicles failed before. He showed up and said, I got a cool one that's affordable that works. And so if you think about what the American people have done is they have handed a decisive victory and really a mandate to Donald Trump to go to the White House, bring inflation down, make housing more affordable, Mm. secure the border, don't engage in more wars, and make me have some sort of economic opportunity that I don't feel like I have right now. Now, the reason why that's really important is because people like Elon Musk provide those services. They're de- it's a deflationary type technology. It's going to help bring down costs. It's going to put this in the hands of people. And so artificial intelligence being another area that people are saying, hey, is this real? Is this not real? There's money going into the stocks. But what about for me individually? Yeah. If all of a sudden artificial intelligence does fulfill the promise, which I think it will, it will unlock a lot of time for the average person, both productivity at work, but also in their uh, kind of uh, personal lives. And so when that occurs, now you have people who have time, they have tools, and you have the uh, economy in a place where it's stronger. That is going to be a massive production gain for America. And I think that we're on the precipice of this economic explosion under a Trump presidency. Before, Anthony, you mentioned energy. And I think it's really important to think about how the voters spoke yesterday. They spoke out um, on behalf of their interests. Kevin, 70% of those in our voter analysis said economy was their number one issue. Input costs are impacted by oil prices. In Pennsylvania, where we saw the massive swing that basically, you know, Mm. pushed Donald Trump forward. Uh, Ultimately, people spoke on the issue of fracking. I was there yesterday. It matters to them. It's a huge part of their economy. So you're not seeing a huge move in the oil price today, but he's massively going to open things up. Well, and get it going. We're on the cusp of an energy crisis in America, specifically on electricity. If you go to any uh, power authority, I don't care if it's West Virginia, Virginia or North Dakota, South Dakota, and ask them for 100 megawatts 
of just power, they can't give it to you. Mm. So what Trump is doing here is going to be lowering the input costs for all 11 sectors of the economy by getting the power down, not just you know, oil or gasoline, it's also electricity we need. And so when I look at opportunity for investors, and one of the reasons I'm getting on an aircraft tonight and flying to Riyadh and Abu Dhabi and Geneva, we now have a pro-power sector. And so we have to build power generation. That's billions of dollars, and I'm the man to do that. I'm hot to trot. I'm getting on the hot plane. Hot to trot. All right. I like it. A last one for you guys. Let's see if you disagree or not on this one. Um, Trump in... I think that might mean Lena Khan at the at the FTC is out. Should she be out, Anthony? I think that entrepreneurism in America is the driving force. We have seen entrepreneurs build this country forever. And the less that the government is involved in having their hand in that, the better. And so, yes, there are people who are concerned about monopolies, et cetera. Um, but the fact that you can't point to a single business in America that doesn't have competition. Yeah. And so whenever you see that, you can say you may not like how much competition they have, but there is still competition. And we can sit and we can complain about all kinds of different products, services, companies, et cetera. Right. But America was built on competition. Stop complaining and start competing. And I think that's really where we've got to get. You with them on that one? I Regarding her specifically, I say innovation, not regulation. And so I'd like to thank her for her service and get her a new exciting job at somewhere else. Thank you for watching the interview highlights of Gareth Soloway. If you enjoy this highlight video, please kindly subscribe and help share this video for us to share more of this valuable content. Thank you.